All right, let's be honest with ourselves. The Pies have won three games and lost 10. Head coach Nathan Buckley has copped so much of the criticism of the club, especially over the past few seasons. So many in the media have come hard at the coach box, and he's such an obvious scapegoat, but I don't think it's fair at all. Add to this that former president Eddie Maguire was the first pin to drop five months ago after a string of PR disasters. I found the whole thing sad that he stood there in his resignation interview as a proud Collingwood man in clear pain while he justified so-called mutual agreement. It was so distasteful that Collingwood Football Club couldn't get somebody with enough guts to sack him and just justified the Pies fans. Showed a lack of respect and a lack of morals. So let's just ask this question. When was the last time the side was winning? Only as recent as 18 months ago, the club was flying. By the end of the 2019 season, the Pies finished the season with the top four with a record of 15 wins and seven losses. Last year, a lot of teams struggled to find consistency with obvious world issues giving the AFL and all of its teams a challenging set of circumstances. One of these being the footy bubble which in its basic form were safe areas in Australia organised by the league where all teams in 2020, like the rest of us, waited on different protocols and decisions before playing games and finishing the season. According to a few, there were rumours of players on the roster struggling mentally with not seeing family and friends, etc. Understandably. However, most clubs had to struggle with this as well, so why did Collingwood shit the bed so badly in the off-season? In my humble opinion, I have one answer, and it may be obvious, but it's money. Plain and simple. Whoever is in charge of the salary cap at the club has done a terrible job over the past decade. Salary cap pressure finally burst at the seams in the off-season, and all of a sudden the Pies front office seemed to have had a heap of drama unfolding at once. At the time of the trade period, I was tuning in daily to different podcasts. I couldn't believe how honest Pies management sounded at the time. This man is naming off players that could be on the trade table. One name I remember being thrown up was Mason Cox, hearing he could become a Bulldog. As a Dogs fan, I was excited with that, as we needed a primary ruck. Another name was Jaden Stevenson, who we all know to be a young, talented, high-end draft pick, who is a game-changing type of talent. It was starting to become clear to me that the club had no option but to make some changes to the list. I respected his honesty at the time, but as a fan, if I'm putting my corporate hat on part of your job is the front office is professionalism, giving diplomatic answers and playing a straight bat to the media. With all this happening and us footy fans starting to see some smoke emerge from the Collingwood camp, it was clear that they had some salary cap issues. So with these issues, they ended up trading out Jaden Stevenson to North Melbourne. This wasn't surprising, but the next name was star midfielder Adam Trelaw was made available and was traded to the Western Bulldogs for essentially it was their first round pick, which happened to be about 14 by memory. I was shocked when this happened. It seemed this powerful club had run into some real deep issues away from the field. So fast forward to today. Head coach Nathan Buckley comes forward with a resignation. I just don't buy it. I think he was pushed out in the media ploy to make it seem like it was his fault for the club's incompetence. If the front office at Collingwood didn't blow up the roster at season's end, I'd be shocked. I think Buck's departing is the final piece of the Collingwood's plan to start over from scratch. I expect guys like Scott Pendlebury, Darcy Moore, Steel Sidebottom, Taylor Adams to be made available in the upcoming off-season. I'm calling it at least one of them guys will be in another uniform next season. I just think that their list has a heap of young talent that they will want to mould over the upcoming decade and I see them slowly phasing out these guys from the Bucks era and going in a total different direction. While it's said, I also think it will be interesting to see if things can change for the better. In my opinion, I don't think they will, as I think the front office has a lot more problems, but I guess we will see what happens over the next few years. Anyway guys, would love to know what you think in the comment section below. How can the Pies start winning again? Let me know. Until next time guys, peace.